The world won't be fixed through a technology. The world won't be fixed through what we build. The world will change through us recognizing and prioritizing the agendas and the problems that people are trying to solve. My name is Mary Gray, and I'm an anthropologist and a media scholar. I think when technology companies first started making software and hardware, they thought they were just making things that end up on a shelf. And times have changed. They don't make technologies or devices. They make social environments. They create ways that we interact with each other. And so the work that I do is specifically go where people are, look at how they already solve problems, and stick around, find out over time what it is that works for them, what's not working, and be able to identify how they muster the means to create connection. So my first research project out in the country came from five years of research looking at the lives of lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer and questioning young people who live in Southeast Appalachia. And what I wanted to understand was as somebody who comes from a rural community, what are the ways in which young people would be able to turn to technologies and make themselves more visible I think the thing that was most striking was that they used the internet, they used digital media to find people nearby. It wasn't to escape where they were so much as it was to be able to establish their queer presence where they lived. But at the time, the lack of job opportunity made it harder for young people to stay where they wanted to stay. And I left feeling like the need for economic opportunity was a part of the conversation about addressing discrimination and um, human rights. So when I got to Microsoft Research and started looking into like how is artificial intelligence built, I had a basic question like how does this work? It turns out it requires a lot of people hired on contract and these jobs that are literally pennies a pop for putting labels on an image are exactly the kinds of jobs that end up in places like rural United States. And it raised this question, what do people experience on the other end of the screens when you're hiring somebody at a distance to do work that might literally last a few seconds? And that was really the beginning of the research for ghost work. And what we found was it's the kind of offshoring outsourcing work that makes it really hard to see who's helping you, who's generating value for your company, but most importantly, who's working. So many people think we're talking about the workers. We're not, we're talking about the work conditions. The current work conditions that people who are in these ghost work conditions face, it's not a market problem. It is a social challenge and currently our social failure to value people in service to each other. Fundamentally, we cannot fix this problem through the market. We are going to have to come together as we always have historically, people recognizing labor, people representing workers' voices, government and the private sector are going to have to sit down at a table and decide what is the new social contract for work?